सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू दिस न्यू वीडियो सो एज आई टोल्ड इन माई प्रीवियस वीडियो वी आर डिस्कसिंग विद सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट शेड्यूलिंग टेक्निक्स सो द वन काइंड ऑफ शेड्यूलिंग इज डन दैट इज प्री एम्प्टिव शेड्यूलिंग सो दैट इज डन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो प्लीज गो एंड वॉच इट इट इज वेरी इजी इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड इट इजिली यू कुड बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट शेड्यूलिंग इन दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड विच दे हैव गिवन डिफरेंट प्रोसेस आई डीज एंड फॉर दैट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द एवरेज वेटिंग टाइम एंड द टर्न अराउंड टाइम okay so please go and watch that video so in this video we are going to discuss with one more kind that is round robin scheduling okay this is one more scheduling technique round robin scheduling in this the scheduling would be happening in a loop okay and the uh, uh, time spent in the ready queue would be constant for each step of operation okay so this is one thing you should be knowing in under round robin scheduling so let us see this in detail now each process in the ready queue is executed for a predefined time slot as i have told you it has a constant time slot okay for each process to be executed it has the same time to be uh, executed okay the execution starts with picking up the first process in the ready queue and it is executed for a predefined time okay predefined means for a particular set of time which they would be mentioning it at that time only each process would be getting executed when the predefined time elapses or the process would be completed before the predefined time slice the next process in the ready queue is selected for execution okay so this is repeated for all the processes in the ready queue once each process in the ready queue is executed for the predefined time period the scheduler comes back and picks the first process in the ready queue for again for the execution okay since uh, until the time of the complete scheduling uh, would be completed till that the loop would be continuing that is they mentioned here you see the scheduler comes back and picks the first process again so that's why it is a complete loop it goes on from starts from the first process it comes to the last process and the time slot is not over so that's why it comes again to the first process and it continues until that complete time slot is over okay so this is the round robin scheduling so you see here this round robin scheduling is similar to the first come first selection scheduling that is fcf fcf scheduling and the only difference is that a time slice based preemption is added to the switch of execution between the process in the ready queue okay so you see here this is the complete uh, loop here for round robin process 1 execution switch that is one time slot would be getting added then process 2 process 3 process 4 and since the time slot is not if if it is not completed so this would be completely uh, going in a loop okay so this is the diagram to represent the round robin scheduling okay so please go through it So now let us discuss again one simple example problem under the round robin scheduling and try to understand how this would be working. Okay. So here this is one example here. Three processes with process IDs P one, P two, P three with estimated completion time for each process. They are given the completion time here that is six, four, two milliseconds. Enters the ready queue together. in the order again they have mentioned the order that is p1 first it would be entering p1 would be entering first then p2 then p3 calculate the waiting time and turn around time for each process and the average waiting time and turn around time assuming there is no io waiting for the process okay so there would be no input output waiting for the process in rr algorithm that is round robin algorithm they have mentioned even the time slice okay in the round robin they would be mentioning the time slice here they have mentioned it as 2 milliseconds okay so for every 2 milliseconds you see here for each process to be completed in a loop it would be taking only 2 milliseconds okay whereas in the first preemptive scheduling we have seen different time slots right so here for time slot would be remaining constant for each scheduling uh, requirement okay so that's one change you have observed here so you see here the scheduler sorts the ready queue based on the fcfs policy and picks up the first process that is p1 from the ready, ready queue and executes it for the time slice uh, time slot time slice of 2 milliseconds okay and when the time slice is expired p1 is preempted and p2 is scheduled because pm p1 would be completed for 2 milliseconds now p2 is scheduled for execution that is uh, they have mentioned the order that is it is coming in the order of p1 p2 p3 so that's why next p2 is scheduled for execution the time slice again expires after 2 milliseconds and the execution of p2 is completed now p2 is preempted and p3 is picked for scheduling okay and again it completes its execution time within the time slice that is 2 millisecond and again the scheduler would be picking p1 
for execution for the next time slice. So this procedure is repeated till all the process processes are serviced. Okay. The order in which the processes are scheduled for execution is represented as follows. So you see here, first P1 comes, it would be coming for uh, 0 to 2 milliseconds, then P2 that is uh, 2 to 4 milliseconds, then P3 that is 4 to 6 milliseconds. Now after that again, again you see P1 since uh, the time slot for uh, since after 6 milliseconds, uh, since the time slot for P1 is not completed because the, the P1 uh, they have given the estimated completion time for P1, they have given it as 6 milliseconds, okay. But in the first first slot, we have completed only 2 milliseconds. So, still more 4 milliseconds are remain, remaining for P1. So, that's why it is again repeated. So, again P1, again for 2 milliseconds only, it is come, that is from 6 to 8. So, now uh, it was 4. Now, again, again 2 milliseconds are over. So, now 4 minus 2, the remaining time is 2. So, till more 2 are remaining. So, it would be executing again. Now after P1 again P2 would be coming since P2 initially was 4 after the first stage it has completed 2 so now the remaining time for P2 would be 2 milliseconds so again it would be executing for 2 milliseconds now P2 is, P2 would be completely com uh, completed since uh, the completion time for P2 they have given it as 4 so P2 would be completed and P3 since P3 initially they have given it as 4 2 milliseconds to complete it has already completed here see here it has already completed so that's why p3 would not come into the picture now again the remaining time for p1 is again 2 milliseconds that would be executing again up to 12 milliseconds so p1 would be taking uh, till 12 milliseconds the whole procedure will be taking in the round robin and you see here uh, six it was p1 was initially six at the first stage it has completed two so the remaining was four and the second stage it has completed two now the remaining was two at the final stage it has completed two so the p1 would be completed in exactly 2 millisecond algorithm then for p2 you see here initially it was 4 the first stage it has completed here then the second stage so 2 plus 2 4 it has completed and p3 for 2 milliseconds you see here in the first stage only 2 milliseconds it has completed okay so it would be taking time slice they have mentioned it as 2 milliseconds to complete 6 4 2 milliseconds of p1 p2 p3 and this is the order mentioned here okay so hope you understood this order it's very easy if you understand the round robin algorithm okay so now the waiting time for all the processes are given as you see here waiting time for p1 they mentioned it as 0 plus 6 minus 2 plus 10 minus 8 okay that is 0 plus 4 plus 2 that is 6 milliseconds so waiting time for p1 to complete we should be waiting it for 6 milliseconds that is first p1 starts executing and waits for two time slices to get execution back and again the uh, one time slice for getting the CPU time. So in this case it will be taking around 6 milliseconds that is 0 plus 6 minus 2 that is complete uh, this, these two things should be completed right so that's why it takes 6 minus 2 and for the second slice it takes 10 minus 8 okay that is 10 minus 8 to complete P2. So that's why the remaining time is 0 first it was 0 then 6 minus 2 is 4 then 10 minus 8 is 2. So total it will be taking 6 milliseconds to complete. Okay. Then for P2, for P2 it is 2 minus 0 plus 8 minus 4. That is 2 plus 4, 6 milliseconds. So here you see for P2 again it is 2 minus 0 at first. Okay. Then we have 8 minus 4. That is 8 P3 and P1 should be completed, right? So that's why 8 minus 4, total time you should be cancel, uh, cancelling it down. 8 minus 4, so that's why 2 and 8 minus 4 is 4. So it would be taking around 6 milliseconds to complete, okay? Next for waiting time for P3, again it is 4 minus 0. So you see here, P3 is here. So since we have only one P3, so total time you should be waiting, that is to complete these two, that is P1 and P2. 4 minus 0. If we take 4 minus 0, the answer would be 4 milliseconds. So the waiting times for P1, P2, P3 are 6 milliseconds, 6 milliseconds, and 4 milliseconds. Now, average time is again easy. Just uh, take the sum of these three and uh, divide by 3. That is 6 plus 6 plus 4 divided by 3. That is 16 by 3. That is 5.33 milliseconds. So again, turnaround time. Turnaround time formula remains the same. Time spent in ready queue plus the execution time so for turnaround time for p1 is 12 milliseconds 
so because it has spent 12 milliseconds you see here at uh, total it has spent 12 milliseconds these are the time spent in the ready queue plus the execution time execution time for p1 is 6 milliseconds right and time spent in ready queue that is it, it has taken around 6 milliseconds so 6 plus 6 is 12 similarly for p2 and p3 it is 10 and 6 okay so add them and take the average that is 12 plus 10 plus 6 divided by 3 that is 28 by 3 that is our answer you will be getting it as 9.33 milliseconds okay so this was about round robin scheduling guys i hope you understood so this i have explained it with, with one example very easy one you will be understanding it okay so this was about round robin scheduling so hope you understood it that's all for the video guys like share subscribe to our channel keep supporting thank you